On a snowy March weekend, New Yorkers found warmth inside the Brooklyn Expo Center at the 12th annual Coffee and Tea Festival. Kristen Dolan, the organizer of the festival, has been a part of it since it started. We realized, let's combine two of these beverages that everyone loves. Most people have coffee a day or tea at some, some type of uh, during their day and have a festival for it. With more than 100 exhibitors and 5,500 visitors, the festival allows small businesses to appeal to a large crowd. We can have small businesses grow if consumers aren't aware of them. Similarly, consumers can open their palates to different products if they don't know they're out there. And for Ben Gordon, co-founder of Wandering Bear Coffee, the festival is the perfect platform to talk directly to fellow coffee fanatics. People that attend this festival are sort of, you know, self-identifying coffee and tea lovers. So it's just very much sort of our group, our customer base, our sort of target demographic. This year's event included seminars to educate attendees. For tea dealers founder Stefan Ramirez, teaching people is what he most looks forward to. But there's going to be a lot of people who are connoisseurs. Um, but I think there's also people there who are just looking f to learn more about tea, and, that, and that's the perfect uh, a platform for it. And because Ramirez's teas come with a hefty price tag, a box can cost up to $85, he fully expects attendees to test him on the quality of his product. That's the hardest part of it, is being to engage um, you know, a wide spectrum of people who are there either to discover something, either to learn more, to grill you. The educated consumer is also a driving factor for newbie tea sales rep Raji Singh to exhibit this year. She says the festival is just the place to expand a primarily European-based tea company. Last year when I walked the show, I realized that this is really the place to be. This is where you're finding all, not, not just coffee lovers, but tea lovers as well. And Singh also appreciates the cooperative spirit of her fellow exhibitors. Even though there's always this, this um, notion of competitors, it's all, we're all trying to get, grow that tea and coffee consumer base, customer base, and grow that appreciation. Although big companies like Starbucks and Tivana might seem like a threat, these small businesses actually partly attribute their success to the coffee and tea giants. If it wasn't for Maxwell House and Starbucks on every corner and Lipton Tea, would the tea industry or coffee industry have grown to be what it is? So we have to be really thankful for, for our quote unquote founding fathers out there, um, and we always welcome them to join the show as well. Instead of resenting coffee and tea powerhouses like Dunkin' Donuts or Tivana, the small business owners play off of their success. Anything, I think we're grateful to them for helping educate the sort of broad customer base around what cold brew is. They say the small businesses focus on quality, not quantity. I try not to hate on them because it's, it's, it's not necessary, but it really, really allows me to say, you've never had green tea like this before. The Coffee and Tea Festival NYC hopes to serve you just your cup of tea. For NYU Tonight, I'm Radula Rajagopal.